Uh, welcome back to this another lesson in our series of Azure Virtual Networking. In this chapter, we are going to learn one of the very important security component of your VNet that is network security groups. In this video, I'm going to talk about what is a network security group and then we will see about the network security rule, uh, security group rules or security rules in short. We'll see what are the default ones and what are the customized ones which we'll make. And in the last, I have put up relevant key characteristics or the pointers about network security groups, which would be very helpful for you if you are preparing for your certification exams or as well as if you are preparing for an interview. So watch it till the last guys, let's begin. So first of all, what is a network security group? It's a kind of a virtual firewall which contains your security rules. And based on these rules, you will allow or deny inbound or outbound traffic to your Azure resources or your virtual machines. Now your energy can be associated at a subnet level, basically which is a recommended level also, which makes your management a bit easy. And when you apply NSG at a subnet level, it can restrict traffic flow to all the machines which resides in that subnet. You can also have an option to apply net network security groups at the NIC or the network interface level. If you assign NIC at that level, then the, all the traffic that flows through that NIC would be controlled by the NSG rules or that network security group rules. From your portal itself, we'll find out whether your uh, network security group is associated with subnet, subnets or network interfaces. Now let's see how does an NSG work. So if you see we have a VNet here and in that VNet I have got two different subnets. Web subnet and subnet app. Let's start about from the VM3 or the subnet app where we can see we have a rule which says allow HTTP TCP port at TCP port 80 and you can see we have an NSG at a NIC level. So whatever traffic flows through that NIC it would be based on the rule which is there and which is applied at this network security group so if the traffic goes to port number 80 it would be allowed otherwise else the traffic would be denied now let's see what happens when we have a combination of network security groups which uh, where we can see we have a security group applied at a subnet level as well as our, at a nic level so in this scenario whatever traffic comes in i mean the inbound traffic it would be first evaluated against the rules which is there on the subnet level network security group once it passes through let's say your network security group at subnet level allows uh, http traffic at port 80 then it reaches to network uh, security group which is applied at a nic level here again the traffic would be evaluated across different uh, rules specified in this network security group if the traffic is allowed for HTTP port 80 then it would be reaching to your virtual machine VM1 as it will be dropped. In the second scenario where we have VM2 and it does not have any uh, network security group at a NIC level whatever rules we have at the subnet level that would be applicable here if it is allowed at network security group which is at a subnet level then the traffic would be reaching to the VM2. For the outbound traffic also when it leaves the VM1, it will first be evaluated against the rules which is at the NIC level and then it reaches to the sub, uh, network security group at the subnet level and it would be evaluated again. So that's how your rules work and well, there are certain priorities uh, which has to be set here and once a rule matches a set configuration, there will be no further evaluation happening. So let's jump into the portal and see how does it work. Here, if it is not frequently used items, or you can search one for here, you can just type network security group, it will start showing up here. That's when it's sit here. So, we have got a one which is uh, already there. I'll talk about it in a uh, little bit time. Let's let me quickly create a new security group for this demonstration. Uh, this is going to be uh, this is my subscription, and now I need to choose my resource group. Give it a name, let, let me call it kind of a uh, demo NSG1. Uh, region would remain same uh, I'm skipping the tags here click review and create it will go for the final validation validation has been passed click on create and this is a, a rule where I have not added I'm mean, this is a network security group where I have not added anything so it should not take much time and it would be quickly ready so by default every network security group will have three inbound security rules and three outbound security rules so these are my three inbound default security rules and if you just click on here you can see there is nothing customized here so click on 
uh, default rules and we have got three security rules one is allow vnet inbound which allows all the traffic within the virtual network within the same virtual network all the traffic is allowed and that's the reason in a single vnet all the virtual machines uh, will, doesn't matter how many subnets there are they would be able to talk to each other similarly all the traffic coming in from your azure load balancer would be allowed other than these two anything would be denied and if you see there's a priority uh, uh, number given here so higher the lower the number the highest would be the priority and the as uh, soon as a match is found for the configuration further evaluation will be stopped similarly we have an outbound security rules and all virtual traffic all traffic to the virtual networks as well as all traffic to the internet would be by default allowed other than that everything would be denied so these are my default rules and as currently it is not attached or associated with any of the nick or as to the subnet these uh, this network security group would be affecting anyone so let's see i have already prepared a server for this uh, demonstration of a click on virtual machine and this is my server and this is its public and private ip addresses and i'll show you what the configuration is currently let's go to network washer go to topology let me select my resource group if you look at it here so we have this server and where we have this server one nsg that is the or a network security group which got created along with the creation of this uh, uh, server and it has been attached to this nick you can see that it's there's nothing which is at the subnet level so we have a security group network security group at a nick level so i'm going to show you what a kind of a rules we have so if you look at it here inbound security rules i these are the default ones again so there's nothing which allows an rdp here so i won't be able to rdp to this machine because the inbound security rules do, uh, do not have any rule for that so let's try connecting to this if i go there let me go to my virtual machine and let me pick up the ip address from here this is the public ip address which we can use and if i try to rdp it should not be going through if i go and put it here click on connect and see it will initiate a remote connection but it's now it's not going to go through so i'm going to cancel it and I'm going to cancel this also. I'm going to home. <clears throat> now, if I need to allow RDP to this virtual machine, what I need to do is I need to go to the network security groups. This one was attached at the NIC level. So what I'm going to do is inbound security rules, add a rule here. Uh, now you need to select a source. Source can be any where you will allow anyone on this planet to come inside. You can also opt for certain IP addresses range or IP addresses. See here, you can specific, you can pick up a specific IP or a range. You can also opt for a service tag. Service tags are a kind of an IP ranges or IP uh, management tags which Microsoft uh, creates and manages for you for all those uh, Microsoft services uh, which are running. So. These are the tags you can have internet, virtual network, Azure load balancer, API management. All these services are listed here. There are a lot of services are listed. So if you select a service tag and is any changes happening in the background these or in the these services, your service tag would be automatically updated and that would ease your management of the network security rules. So whenever possible and feasible, try to use service tags. Then for this purpose, as I'm coming from the outside of the internet, so I'm going to select any my source port range would be any destination i'm just keeping it any although it's not a recommended method but still i'm gonna do this and the port would be 3389 so if i say 3389 would be tcp i'm allowing an action to uh, let me in on for this rdp thing here you can define a priority this priority can be from 100 to 4096 that should be the total uh, number as you can see here the, the any number between these two would be applicable so i'm going to keep it at let's say 200 right then give it a name give it a meaningful name which can let you know that what would be the purpose of this uh, network security group. i'll say this allow rdp right you can put up a description also to do to describe this i'm click on gonna add so it's creating a security rule also remember that uh, network security groups are stateful and once you allow an inbound, inbound traffic the outbound traffic would be automatically allowed right so let's it says 
created security rule i'm gonna go and see how does it uh, whether it's working or not i'm gonna do the rdp again so this was rdp uh, let me put my ip address click on connect and this time i'm pretty sure that it would allow me to go in so you can see that rule has been updated here in the background our rdp session so now if when we log into this machine i would like to show you something that it is i also made it this is kind of a web server so let's see if i just put up uh, try to browse my local host it's an is server where i put up a website right so it's going to our website i'm going to close this let's see how does it work when i reach to the browser here so this is my virtual machine again i need to copy that thing if i try to see to access this website it should not work here because i have not allowed or there's no port here which is working or listening on that but specific uh, for that http traffic it, it will not work so i'm going to just stop it so let's see how we can make it work let's again go back to the network security groups this time i'm going to go for demo in sg1 because i want to show how you can attach or associate this thing to the then let's go to subnet i'm gonna sorry i'm gonna connect it to or associate as subnet level so click on associate find your virtual network look for your subnet this is a web subnet i'm gonna click on ok although i have associated with that web subnet but there's no rule as such which can help us to browse a website right see there's nothing there okay so let's add a rule here um, again i'm making it any although you can either can select service tag of internet but i just i'll stick with the anything destination any and the port would be 80 so i'm going to make it 80 port number port number uh, protocol is tcp i'm allowing an action and i'm making it let's say 300 i'm saying allow http allow http click on add so i'm adding this rule now if i go back to the home and go to the network watcher and if i select my topology i want to show you something this is my demo one and if you look at it now i have got this demo nsg attached at the subnet level so you you understand how does it work the traffic will come it will first get evaluated with this subnet level nsg that is demo one which allows http at port 80 then we have another nsg that is not allowing port 80 so the traffic because it have it will get evaluate evaluated at two different levels so it will not still reach here so what i need we need to do we need to either remove this one or we need to add a role to it right so let's see how we can add a role to it click on here go to your inbound rules and click on add here we add the same rule here I'm just making it 80 TCP I'm allowing it and giving a priority of 210 and again I'm saying allow nick HTTP click on add it has been added here refresh here if I want to hide my default rules you can see I have got two default rules array which is allow RDP and allow nick HTTP now if I go back to my home and go to security groups i would like to show you something if i look at the demo nsg and if you hide this one i have only allow http here so you must be wondering i'm not allowing rdp here yes if uh, currently the connection is going on so it will not be interrupted but once i if i do not change this, uh, this rule and add an rdp here and i disconnect this session this will not allow me to do the rdp and why so because at this level you can see that rules i mean the traffic would be evaluated at this level first which does not allow an rdp but now uh, what we are doing we are checking for the http so we have allowed http at port 80 here and port 80 here as well so let's see whether it works or not now let's copy yes yeah, there let's go there and see it's working right so it's working we can see how we can change the uh, default 
rules or or override the default rules with a less uh, priority or so less number of rule less rule number or lowest rule number which has got higher priority so that's about how you can create another thing which i want to show you if you click go and create a virtual machine let's say click on add here click on virtual machine and if you just let's say demo one and give any name let's say vm3 or vm sorry vm3 uh, i don't want any availability let's go for 2016 again and if i just say as a user and we have got a super strong password here okay i forgot okay and if you allow selected ports here so what uh, what are you currently doing here you are allowing a rule at a nick level of nsg so remember that whatever you select here that would be a and rule in would be inserted in a nsg which would be at a nick level right now if you go further next disk networking and if you come here here also you get an option to allow a nick security group right so what you can do either you can select none or basic or advanced if you select advanced you get an option whether you want if you want you can select an existing risk uh, network security group or you can give it a new name so this would be a vm3 nsg and that would be applicable at a nick level if you continue with the same configuration so that's all how you can create manage and change your uh, the configuration of your network security groups let's talk about so some of the key characteristics of the network security groups so if we go further so these pointer would help you to uh, manage your certification exam as well as interviews so you should remember that your network security group will contain security rules that will allow you to or deny network inbound or outbound traffic to your azure resources nsgs are assigned to a network interface or a subnet level when you assign nsg to a subnet the rules apply to all network interfaces in that subnet each subnet and network interface can have one NSG applied to it. Very important to remember. Your NSG will support TCP, UDP, and ICMP, and it operates at layer 4 of the OSI model. Again, very important to remember. Then, with the NSG, the connections are stateful, guys. Remember that. Return traffic would automatically be allowed for the same TCP, UDP session. Several default security rules created by Azure when within each NSG and which you cannot remove but you can override them with the rules of a higher priority you can add more rules by specifying name of the rule giving a priority which is a number from 100 to 4096 lower the number and the rule will have the higher priority and a port protocol source destination and what action whether you want to allow or deny basically this is called uh, five tuple hash so this is what you can remember with then once the condition of a rule matches the NSG con the network security group configuration, rule processing or evaluation stops. Further rules will not be checked whether they are allowing or denying. Right? That's how, guys. That's all about your network security group. Thanks for watching.